Hi, my name is Dave. I would like to show you this Goto 16mm F20 1200mm focal length telescope from the 1950s, probably early 50s, maybe late 50s, uh, on an equatorial mount. And it's got all sorts of interesting, fascinating features. I believe that Goto was one of the most innovative telescope makers, especially with regard to the mounts. Quite interesting and strange things going on, experimental things and things that perhaps they changed later on uh, for good reason. Anyway, we'll, we'll take a look at some of those interesting features. Okay, here's the box. Let's open it up and take a look. See how it's packed inside. There's the scope. Let me show you how easy it is to set up this tripod. Because of this nice little spreader system, it's easy to fold out, carry it in basically one hand. All right, let me show you how this neat spreader system works. Uh, first of all, he was very clever in attempting to design this. He manufactured a special part there. Look at the way this works. Very, very sweet. It just, uh, you put the legs together, it all swings down very nicely. Cool, cool as can be. In addition, it's got a nice little tray, and the hole here is so that you can put the tray in. And then you've got a place to put your eyepieces while you're observing. How cool is that? Now it's time to put the telescope on. Uh, these little devices here, this slides in like so. Then you've got a screw that you have to sort of make captive here. And slide this one up, same basic idea. And now you have an adjustable mount. You're going to adjust this for balance. It also, interestingly enough, it has um, a built-in a built-in weight in here because this thing is so darn long. It's got a weight inside here. It's only a couple of pounds, but uh, the rest of the scope requires that. So now we've got that. This thing also features a rotating focuser. So you want to rotate the focuser. The finder slides on from the rear. Uh, I don't like that. Uh, and I believe they didn't like it either because I think my 80 millimeter Goto is newer. And in fact, it has a similar kind of a system, but it slides on, the finder slides on from the front which I think is probably much, much better. I'm going to show you this very strange um, right ascension and declination worm and worm gear system. First of all, I'm not sure if you can tell, but that's spring loaded. So what's going on there is there's a little tiny spring in there somewhere. You can probably see it. Anyway, when I unload it, you can move the worm gear around the worm wheel uh, freely. Now this is also designed for some strange reason to have a sort of a rotatable system. Actually I can sort of understand the system. What we have here is a way to rotate the entire housing, loosen it up, and I believe that was so that you could put this, put the control on the other side. It's common to be, you know, to switch from one side of the mount to the other, so to speak. Well, with this system, if you're clever, you can move that whole thing around. Now you've still got that. This is now fixed, at least more or less. So you now have your worm and worm gear on this side. And you can work it, so forth, lock it down or free it up and find things and so forth. I believe that was the idea. Uh, it's very, very confusing. I'll tell you from experience. You're trying to figure this out at night in the dark. You're going to have a devil of a time figuring out which one does what and exactly what does what. Um, maybe if you got used to it, <laughs> you would figure it out. Uh, anyway, so that's maybe one of those innovations that uh, just never quite grab hold and Mr. Goto, I have the feeling that Mr. Goto was a born innovator, just loved to innovate. And I think some innovations came and went and didn't stick. This spring-loaded thing is also, it's a little irritating 
it's kind of good and kind of bad, but the main thing is that you can, if you push, you can move the darn thing around. Um, I don't particularly like that, but I don't know, maybe it was, I think it was designed to do that. Um, so that it was kind of a ratcheting system. See what's going on there? I, I just don't like it. I'd rather have a lock and move it around and lock it and all that stuff. Uh, the declination is similar. It's got a, you can see this is spring loaded here. And again, you can uh, lock, let's lock it down. You can hear it clanking around. Uh, <laughs> I honestly, I don't know if that was intentional. I sort of think it wasn't intentional. I think it was just a, uh, an attempt to be clever about how you, how you do that. And uh, I think they abandoned that <laughs> for good reason, probably. This whole thing, this whole, the, you know, this elbow joint here is kind of crazy also. And the only thing I can uh, assume is that they did that so that this thing would be easy to adjust. Let me show you how that works. You, this is a kind of a locking thing. Now, here you have your, whoa, don't let it go too far. Now you can adjust this for azimuth for your latitude sorry okay so now it's and it's locked down nice and nice and tight uh goto always made things quite well um just a little strange in this thing boy that has strangeness written all over it so that's a, a little bit weird too i think i understand it was intended to be so that you could easily move this to Altaz, so you could easily now have this thing set up for uh, terrestrial observation. I'll have to show you that outside. Uh, also, I wanted to show you these. This is not original. These two are not original. I had to make this. This was missing. Uh, part of this uh, universal joint was missing, so I had to manufacture one. One of the nice things about being an amateur machinist is you can make something like that in the shop. It was an enjoyable couple of hours to make that in the shop. Very, very fun. Make the whole thing and try to match the original as, as far as you could as best as possible. All right, here are all the eyepieces. Notice this has got the extremely unusual. I don't think I've ever seen one before. This is a 30 millimeter. This is an image erecting system. So it's a, it's a fixed length eyepiece. It's not a zoom eyepiece. It's 30 millimeters. There's optics all the way through there. Several lenses and so forth. Uh, very old school kind of a way to do it. Uh, and then it's got the wonderful and unique Goto system where you have a 12.525. So you use this device here and you take this out and put that in and so forth. And you can change it from a 12.5 to a 25. Uh, once again, an innovation that never really quite caught on. It's a little bit inconvenient. Of course, you don't want to be doing that in the middle of the night. Well, maybe you do. And then there's the dreaded sun filter. You, of course, do not use those. So that goes on the cap of, of any of the eyepieces. You remove the little nameplate. Here's a nice Goto star diagonal. This scope is now set up for outside observation in Altaz. And as you can see, it's very, very long. This is a 30 power image erecting eyepiece. I'm um, sorry, 30 millimeter image erecting eyepiece. So this is about a, so this is a 40 power image erecting eyepiece. Even reaching the focuser here is not trivial. Very easy to convert this back and forth. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the GOTO Model 105 60mm F20 telescope. Thank you very much for watching.